YouTube, it's Bay, and for today's video, I'm uh, back in back in my home shop, which is a little echoey in here because it's still under construction. And actually, my shop shop is under construction right now too. So this is what you're gonna get for today. But for today's video, we're actually gonna head back to Hill Country Performance to continue the Supra Saga series. This is something that I had no idea even existed, never read about this on forums before, and I feel like this is something that might be overlooked on a lot of cylinder heads, not just the 7M. Uh, so yeah, super cool. And also we get a little bit of a crash course from Danny on the oiling system in a 7M cylinder head. So um, yeah, stay tuned and let's just jump right into it. Yeah. So there we are. We have a plug inside the head. How do you get that plug out? You can mangle the whole thing around or just leave it alone, but you got crud behind it, or we can TIG weld to it, and we're just gonna keep TIG welding on it till I get it above the deck. Once it's above the deck, then I used a Chevy head dowel, and I welded it to it. So there I am just holding it on there, and there it is, it's welded. From that point, now we can use a dowel puller, which not everybody has one. You can use a pair of ice grips, you can use anything. Now we're gonna extract it. So there's my dowel puller. And there it is coming out, and there's the oh. ball. So now we've removed it without damaging the head whatsoever. Now we can c clean that, that port out, we can thread it for a pipe plug, put a pipe plug in it, and now it's you can service your head. So now we took a head that was a throwaway head, not really a throwaway head, but everybody, Mazda's doing this a lot. All the plugs on a Mazda are aluminum plugs that they just press in and they swedge them. So when we're in here do doing our machine work, you know, everybody just leaves them alone. We have to drill them, tap them, use a slide hammer, pull out all these plugs, and then where do you get plugs? If we're doing an aftermarket turbo setup or something cool, we'll th thread them all and just put in pipe plugs in them. Yeah. But um, I also have the Mazda part number, and I stock the little Mazda factory brass plug. So we'll go ahead and pop it. If it's just a regular job, but it spun a crank, I do not want to put let it go out there without cleaning every orifice oh, on totally. this thing. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But they, they get away with it because they're, it's cheaper to drive in a ball than to thread it and then put a plug. Totally. Yeah, two cents as composed to three cents. Yeah. Or <laughs> whatever, <I'm not. laughs> Fair but enough. I glass bead it anyway. If I glass bead, I'm going to remove every darn plug. You know, that's why, you know, yes... If you're not going to go through all this, save yourself the time and just wash it, wash in the car wash. At least you know you don't have metal in it. Yep. But if you spun a rod, if you have a bad turbo, your turbo went bad, which wasn't the turbo's fault, um, <laughs> and it never is, never is, you, you, you need to make sure. If you don't, you put another, another turbo out and you tear the turbo out, but it's because of contaminated oil. So we get into a whole thing about turbos. It's never the turbo's fault. It's not as critical that we do straight like we did the exhaust bolt because you got an exhaust manifold. And if your bolts are like this, the manifold ain't gonna go on. Right. So so this isn't, in fact, this was never drilled. So you can see. <laughs> you see all of the crud that's Ew. in there's sand and there's just old grease and grime and so sand or you know from the from from the sand. From, from right the, so glass the gla glass yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, glass from the glass bee machine if you like I say if you can't pull out every plug don't do it at all yeah um, we'll be in there and then crud this will be completely crud we just did a motor that is an old old motor and it has this much sludge in it. It had this much sludge in it, so there's no way that all would have gone and lubricated. This particular hole right here on this motor, that's the motor. This is where all the oil for the head comes up. So on this cylinder head from the block, all the oil comes up here. Comes across, goes sideways, and it lubricates the cylinder heads. There's your oil right there. Yep. Comes up there. Yep. These camshafts are hollow. So oil comes in through the head, through the camshaft. So the camshaft is hollow, and then oil comes out of the journals there. Yep. So it went from here, went up, went across, went into here, and through the inside of the cam, it lubricated every journal. So that little crud that you see there, if we only have a thousand and a half oil clearance, that g glass bead is going to tear your stuff up. Yeah. So this yeah. is like, this is preventative maintenance for the new camshaft, making sure everything's really good. We don't want to tear all this stuff up. Um, and so now that we got the ball out of there, we can run a brush in here. And that's exactly what, what, what we're going to do is we're going to have a brush and we're going to clean out the, the line. Oh. The, the reason that Toyota did this, if you look on this side, 
that oil line which comes in right here has to go across and feed both cam journals. Uh -huh. There's where it's feeding the cam journal. There's where it's feeding the, the cam journal. If Toyota could have drilled out the other end and put two plugs, they, they probably would have. But what they do, it comes up here and it goes left and right and this way. They had to do this to drill there. It does not come out the other end. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they came in here and drilled, got that line there, and then they came in through the camshaft and went in through there. So when they were done, they had to plug that hole. Yep. So that hole is only there for them to drill it. Once it's drilled, they don't need the hole anymore. They don't. We need it to get all the stuff cleaned out. So once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and drill this. We're gonna tap it for a pipe plug. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a pipe plug that can actually be removed and put in. You so could, it's serviceable. Yeah. That's an upgrade. So you can go in there. You could put an oil pressure gauge there. Yeah. If you had a place that you didn't need, you could do that. We could put a fitting here. We could put an oil pressure gauge. We can put a plug, whatever you want to do, but it's serviceable. The next time, hopefully never, um, this head comes out, you can pull that plug out and you could clean this head. So there's not going to be, it's going to be serviceable. So Toyota didn't need that. It's not that they were trying to do anything bad, but it makes it not serviceable. So yes. that's why I call them, you know, not just throwaway heads, but they're made to be used and then they're not made to be cleaned, you know. But of course, Toyota's will last forever, so they should have never had that problem. Yeah, maybe right. another 500,000 miles from now, I'll need to take this head off and clean it again. <laughs> when, when, when Toyota was done, they just drove that steel ball in there. They put that steel ball in there and they just hammered it in, or not hammered, pressed it in, and that was it. That's what stopped you all. There's no threads. There's, oh. It's just a steel ball inside of a hole. The hole is smaller than the ball. It gets pressed in and that's it, you're done. So we removed it. And I don't wanna just sit here and grind my weld off after I clean it, put that back and hammer it back in. We could do that, but let's not, let's do this. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Let's go ahead and So do what size drill bit? So this is, oh, you, can, you got me asking what size drill bit. <laughs> it's a 2164. 2164, okay. okay. And then we're going to go ahead and just drill it. On a pipe thread, it's tapered. It's yeah. not like a regular bolt. Right. It's not straight threads. With a regular bolt, you can go in and go out and it's fine. This is actually tapered. Yep. It's made, it's called a pipe thread. And it's when you're sealing water, oil, you know, a pipe thread in a house the same way. Yep. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually tap it, pull it out, and then we're going to put a plug in there. And we're gonna see how far that plug goes in. And then we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna tap it further and further and further until it's flush. So there's no um, number you're shooting for. It's just, you gotta just practice and we're gonna try. We're gonna, we're gonna see it. So here we go. And remember, never dry. This isn't important that it be straight. Um, as well, it's easy straight, else. but yeah, yeah, yeah you, want exactly. it, you want it pretty straight, <laughs> but don't uh, beat yourself on the head. If you try to make it f flush with this, well, the oil hole is crooked. So if you try to make it flush with this, you're going to oh. go this way. But the oil hole is actually not straight. And it's going it's at an angle. angle. It has a slight taper to it. Oh, yeah. So you don't, you know. If I'm doing a whole bunch of them, which on a, a 409 Chevy, there's a lot of plugs that the GM puts that are just plugs. We knock them out and we, we, we try them. I'll go ahead and mark my tap. Once I know how right. far I gotta go, yep, yep. and go through the line and just do them all the same. Let's see what we got. Watch your ears. You see the dark crud that came out of that hole just when I sprayed it? It's a lot of work just to do it right and make it. Yeah, and there, look at there. We're oh. almost there. We could stop right there, but I'm going to take it, as you can tell, you know, another trailer or two. We don't know if there's anything here that's going to be in the way um, if your manifold comes there. And I like to always make it flush because it looks cool. Okay. We, we could stop there and we're done. We have it we have it blocked off. So let's give it another over there. Let's get another turn or two. All right. And we'll still clean them and stuff, but let's see what happens. Let's check in fitment. Look at that one, almost there. And then another uh, time or two putting it in and out will actually make it go in a little bit further. But I'm gonna go one little bit more. Th but that's it, you just want... Um... It looks so nice. Yeah, and now we have a plug. 
blocking that off that's now serviceable. We can pull the plug out, we can take a brush, we can clean the oil line, it's serviceable. Now it's actually, but like I said, Toyota wasn't gonna go do all this trouble. It wasn't necessary for them, just like the torque thing. Right. It's not for them, it's for you. Um, they had no, no problem and it was cheaper to do it with a little ball. Awesome. I love Very it. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And also a huge thanks to everyone that tuned into my first ever live stream on Sunday. As I was just sitting in here and struggling with uh, a way to introduce this video because I had a lot on my mind, but I got it all out in the live stream, so it worked out great. <laughs> Anyways, um, coming soon to a YouTube channel near you, uh, meaning this one, I'm gonna have a lot more updates on the Supra since, you know, everyone's freaking out about the coronavirus and no one's doing anything and everyone's canceling their appointments. It just gives me all this time to work in my car, so I'm not upset about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, stay tuned and we'll have another update for you all in the near future. Okay, bye.